and the, we, you know, it's it, it's all connected to each other, and you need to do everything um, um, uh, properly and on the right thing. There is certain characteristics that you need to uh, do that. So it, there is a, a qualitative and quantitative uh, research, um, and uh, you do a qualitative and quantitative research because you need to do go to the next step and the next step is uh, how how i'm going to do my qualitative and quantitative research is if i'm going to have um, uh, looking at primary data or secondary data so the primary data it could be uh, qualitative and quantitative or one of the two and also the secondary data which is available and easy to, to collect is uh, there was a qualitative and quantitative. So if you are researching in the wrong direction or in the wrong place, or a, you're not really um, looking at uh, the, 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 uh, the right uh, research, then you're probably collecting the wrong data and it becomes a questionable. So how would I start? I can start from the end. So I need to define my, uh, uh, business target. So when I'm defining my business target or putting in my business, uh, well, uh, opportunity plan, put it this way, we cannot call it a business plan. And then we, to do a business plan from the opportunity plan, we need to make sure that we do a, a, a SWOT analysis and was analysis. And, 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 and for getting all these two, we need to do a um, uh, primary and secondary data. And to get the primary and secondary data, we need to do the, 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 the right uh, quantitative and qualitative uh, analysis. So if you notice, like all these are connected to each other and you need to plan. Now within each, one, each stage of it, you need also to do um, uh, the right steps. So for example, today we will be talking about how, what's the right steps of uh, collecting a primary data. Uh, we already spoke about what's the right steps of taking the secondary data when we do a, why we look at before we pick any secondary data, we need to do our literature reviews and all these things. Now, um, for your assignment that you sent to me, uh, no worries about it. Anytime I open your assignment, I will send you a notification as usual telling you that I received your assignment. Uh, if I didn't, I will send you a notification if it's empty, just I did with some people that they send me a wrong assignment or they did not attach their assignment. I told them already, you know, your assignment is missing in, in that section. So uh, don't worry about that as we always, uh, we, we do that. Um, it's today. So I was already made this email. I think you should read your emails and you should see the assignment and should attend the classes the earlier. Uh, so it, it is today, but if it's not, I'm not receiving it today, then there is some penalties in it uh, uh, for the assignment. Now, if you want to cook me anything and send it to me, you're also going to get some penalties on that. Um, these, these research has to be very well done and also it has to put in a nice frame. It's just a beautiful picture in a nice, beautiful frame. If you have a beautiful picture in a bad frame, it's not gonna be very attractive. And if you have a beautiful frame without a nice picture, it's not gonna be attractive. So we wanna make sure that you do it properly. Now, some of you have uh, sent me their assignment and uh, well, I, th I thank you for, for you, but we wanna make sure if you're working as a group, you always have to CC the rest. You cannot you know, just uh, send on behalf of the team. I would not accept it uh, if you are sending on behalf of the team without CCing the others. Now let's go back to this. So it's basically, we are talking about, um, you know, the, uh, the process, the right process of doing it, and each each process should be done properly uh, to to come up with a, a, a right a final uh, business plan. Because any weakness in all these processes, the final the final assignment. 
what final assignment? The, you, the setup of business, like you told, right? Yeah, the final assignment is usually should be sent CC the others. Anything that a group work, every, it has to be CC'd by Sir, others. when it's due now? The which one? Sir, this one, like no. the last one. We have to make it again or not? Today is the last day for today's assignment. Can we send that till like 12 a.m.? Yes, yes, yes. By end of today, I will accept it. After today, it's going to be some penalties attached to it. I, I, okay. You know, yeah. So uh, the, the whole issue is the fact that, you know, we, we start with a kind of, uh, um, kind of a little bit, uh, you know, a freedom. But as the time pass by, we need to be a little bit more disciplined with the work because uh, we need to, you know, um, gain something out of this course. And this course, it would be a, a, a pillar for rest of your work. So imagine if you're, if you're doing a business plan without a proper research, you, no, nobody will be investing in you. Nobody will pay you any attention. The first question they get will be, be very tough on you, asking you questions. Uh, how did you d come up with this research? How did you come up with this result? Why did you do that? Why would you? So with, with the one first question, if you cannot, uh, if you're not doing it the right uh, process to come up with a business plan, then you are not doing the right uh, work. Now you think, okay, I'm going to work for somebody, and uh, that somebody is going to put you as a part of the team to do this uh, kind of a, a, a short-term plan, a long-term plan, and a you know directive plan. It could be one of these things. Or you could be applying for a small loan for doing your own business. A bank will be asking you for a business plan. And when you submit a plan, business plan without a right research and a process, they will reject it. And uh, these are all has to be done uh, uh, properly. Now, um, keep in mind, when I was working at, at uh, um, in a chartered accounting firm, what we were looking at to uh, confirm the, um, uh, the balance sheet, the, ba uh, the statement, the yearly statement is, it's according to GAAP, general acceptant accounting principle. So what's this got to do with whatever we say? Now, as an accountant, if it's not the accounting done according to the general accepted accounting principle, which is called GAAP, G-A-A-P, then I will be rejecting it as, an, as a uh, you know, chartered accountant. Same thing, the bank will be rejecting it. Same thing, the government will be rejecting because they want them to do it in a certain procedure. Same thing with your business plan. If you're planning to do a business plan with a school, or in the future, or you want to plan to borrow a loan from a bank or from nonprofit organization, all of them will be requesting a business plan. A business plan is not saying, yes, I saw people are buying so many ice cream, so I think I should, I should sell ice cream. Nobody will give you a loan for that. Nobody will give you support for that. They want to know uh, how did you come up with this research? Did you come up with, a, did you do your research? Did you do your on ground? Did you do your primary research, secondary research? Did you um, uh, uh, did a qualitative uh, research? Did you do a, a quantitative research? Uh, it's in your uh, primary uh, uh, research, what kind of quality is there? Is it valid? It is re reliable. How did you do that? These are the questions are usually, they will ask you. You cannot just go, oh, I uh, just put my finger out and I saw the wind, which direction is going. So I'm going with that direction. You cannot do that. Um, um, people, uh, whether they are entrepreneurs, they want to invest money, whether they are uh, bankers, they want to see a business. Sometimes, they might oversee your, your business plan or your, your rightness because they already have this information. 
So they're not gonna see a value in, in your presenting. It's just a waste. You know, they say, okay, we know why we are getting to business with you, but um, you know, go ahead and talk to us, but we not we don't think you've done your, your properly. And there also he's underestimating you or she's underestimating you because you're not doing the right thing. So you need to do the right thing and the right process. And you start your right thing and right process. You first, you have the target and you go backward to the first stage. The first stage, me, sir. yes. Sir, uh, uh, I have a question about the assignment. Like we have to edit it in uh, Word? It doesn't matter. You can put it on a video and send it as a video for me. Uh, as long as you, 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 you're delivering your thing. Um, I used to do sometimes assignment at a as a podcast. I did my assignment as a Word. I did my assignment as a PowerPoint. As long as you're delivering uh, the, your assignment, it is acceptable. Uh, sometimes you come uh, to a location with a bus or with a truck or with a Ferrari. You all, by the end, you reach to the location. So the means are the only tools to get you to the target. Now, sometimes uh, it shows how professional you are. If, you are if, you, if you're just writing it on your page and taking a picture and send it to me, that's... Uh, showing that you're not really very professional in your work uh, or you have a limited resources. If you have a limited resources, I do accept that. I understand if you don't have a PC or laptop, but if you do have one and you're still gonna do your handwrite and send it to me, that shows that you really are not, uh, you know, uh, professional enough to, to really uh, deliver it. So delivering uh, tools are only tools so you can do it by words, PowerPoints, PDF. You can do it uh, a podcast. You can do a, a video clip. All these tools are acceptable for me. So uh, 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 please, if you have a question, just write down. So when I, uh, you know, I will be, if it's an, uh, if it's an about assignment or test or exams, but if you write it down, so I when, when, when the break or when I have time, I will uh, tell you, uh, explain that. But if you have any question regarding of the subject today that we are delivering, um, by all means, uh, interrupt me and ask me. Uh, you're most welcome uh, to do that. Now, so the, the whole goal is to do a marketing research is to connect the dots together. And when you are, your basic thing is not built well, whatever you're going to build on it is going to fall apart. So you need to have a very strong uh, setup basic. Uh, and these are the right marketing research, the, uh, which is built on uh, the right primary and secondary data, which is built on the right research. Uh, so all these things, it needs to uh, start with a, a strong basic. Any weakness in this pyramid it will cause a failing in the above part of it. And imagine you did your research and you did your primary and secondary data as collected and you didn't do a SWOT analysis. It would be a useless because in the end, he's gonna say, okay, what's this information all about? And this is where some part of the test when I ask you questions or something, I probably ask you some information. And, and then uh, always my questions have a two part. One part is the basic information and second, how it's gonna be applicable or explain or define or justify. The second part is more important for me than, than the first part because the first part you can collect it from anywhere. Uh, the second part, that where you can justify, explain, add information is the one who is important. Just to make sure that you did understand, um, assignment is due today, as we said last week. Um, uh, please, by end of today or early morning, you can send it to me. Uh, I will open my laptop uh, to look at the assignment by tomorrow. And uh, if it's late, just let me know why it's late. 
if you have a justified reason, I understand, I always understand. But if you don't have any justification, uh, re, uh, then uh, let me know why you do uh, that. Okay. Um, no, you don't need to uh, do, uh, uh, you know, a references for the yoga research. I, I think you, you probably, most of you guys uh, like that uh, app and uh, just uh, do your uh, local research. Okay. Now, um, let me go back to, to the chapter, okay, chapter seven. As we said, we today we're gonna talk about the most basic thing when we start doing a, a, a research, which is the measurement and scaling. So when we wanna do a, 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 a get collect the primary and secondary data, we said in the secondary data, we need to do a, a background literatures and to, to understand and also to, to evaluate how did they do this research? Did they use the right measurement? Did they use the right scaling? And also when we do our primary research, which is a different type of primary research, we need to also uh, put in mind uh, when we do a pre research, how we, what kind of measurement and scaling we will be using. Today, we will be talking about measurement and scaling. And uh, these questions is like, a, when you do a business plan, people will say, well, what, uh, where come you came up? How did you come up with this research, this re result? You say, okay, I did this primary research and my primary research gave me this. So it says, the, the deeper question says, how did you come up with this primary result or secondary? Now, uh, so we will talk today about uh, chapter seven. And in the chapter seven, we are gonna know about the learning objective is to understand the measurement of uh, uh, marketing research uh, and uh, to explain the four basic level of scales. And this can be a little bit, uh, you know, not very really confusing, but we can also, you know, it's not a, you know, you need to know the differences only, but for the test, you probably need to know these things, what's the, and describe the scales development and it's important in gathering primary data. So um, this is also important to, to evaluate the secondary data because when you do a secondary data, as we said, you need to do a, a literature research and literature understanding, and then you need to evaluate how did they do if it's necessary. And if it comes from a very well-known organization, then you don't need to do uh, you know, uh, 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 do a validity or reliability, understand, uh, uh, check for these uh, secondary data. Now discuss the, and then we discuss a comparative and non-comparative scales, how we do comparative versus non-comparative scales. Now, you know, in a, in a research, we do a, a value the, basically what we're looking at value of measurement in marketing. So the measurement in information research. So, so it's basically what we trying to get the accurate measurement is uh, essential to effective decision making. If we say, uh, uh, oh, there was a lots of rain. What do you mean by lots of rain? For somebody, lots of rain is a different than for somebody's allowed lots of rain. And, and you can relate very well. Um, when you talk about monsoon, is a really lots of rain. And when you talk in Saudi Arabia, uh, dripping of water for them is a lots of rain. So accurate measurement is essential to effective decision maker. 
So you need to tell me a lot of rain stands for what? What's the measurement in your, in, in, when you say it's a lot of rain? Now, predicting the success of a product based on current consumer process. Um, so uh, preferences. So if, if you want to build a, a product or you want to sell a product or a service is uh, it's, it's based on the current consumer preference. What's the consumer wants? And everybody probably heard, you heard that the consumer is right. Now, the overview of measurement process is integrity process of determining the intensity or the amount of information about constructs, concept, or objective. Now, we already brought the example of uh, lots of rain. Now, you need to talk about um, um, a right measurement to say what does it mean a lots of rain. Now, when you try to um, uh, give a measure between a high and a low or a, a acceptable or not acceptable, or a demand or no demand, there is a measurement is done. And uh, according to that, it's, it's done for certain concept, certain object or constructs. Uh, constructs is uh, uh, something is uh, driven from some knowledge that you collect together. And we'll talk about construct more and more because it's kind of a, a, a a confusing uh, when you look at the construct, how we can derive a, 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 a qualitative or quantitative uh, from to to come up with a, a construct measures. Now, task, uh, construct selection and scales uh, uh, measurement. Now, we said that in the way early we talked about uh, building a theory, and theory is built from a hypothetical uh, hypothesis. So there is a, a hypothesis which is, has a variable. So um, a construct is basically uh, it's it's a it's hypothetical variable made of a set of components respond or a behavior that provided to be related. Um, we, we, we said in way early, we spoke about the fact that we, to build a theory, we need to build hypothesis. So the hypothesis, uh, there is two type. We said there is a, uh, null hypothesis and there is a, a hypothesis itself. And hypothesis, it, it is the element to prove the theory. Let's say, um, well, we say it's a hot day. Uh, somebody says it's a sunny day. So, um, how we, uh, uh, how do you know it's a sunny day? He says, okay, because any day is above uh, a 25 in Canada must be a sunny day to be a hot day. So this is a hypothesis. He connect two things together, and then when he goes out, he build these hypotheses very hot is very sunny. So these two things becomes a theory connected to each other. And that's where is uh, you build your construct. Construct is something that is almost non-measurable, but is driven from measurable things. That's, that's the best uh, uh, example. Now, construct is basically a, an integrative, process in which a research determine what specific data be collected for solving a defined research problem. So is a construct is something that there is so much data is collected and then to solve a, 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 a problem. Let me give you a, a good example. When you go to a hospital or to see a doctor, when a doctor gives you too many medicines, that he's not a good doctor because he did not recognize really what's your problem. Because if he recognized really what's your problem, he probably gonna give you one or two kind. 
but he is not sure. So he's giving you four or five kind. He says, well, they can fix whatever his problem, okay? But a good doctor, uh, probably he's gonna uh, check your fever, check your heartbeat, check your breathe, check your other thing. And these are kind of a, an objective thing and numbers in it. I says, okay, maybe because he, when he checks the blood, he looks at the, there is some poison food in it or, a, or to check your stomach. Then he drives this to comes up and says, okay, so he is, uh, uh, you know, having a fever is not because of the virus he's getting, he's because he had a food poisoning. And these are the data is collecting to come up with a construct thing, which is a fever. So they are driven things. Uh, you, could, you do an objective and from these objective, connect them to subjective because subjective can have so many reasons for them. So when you connect these, then it becomes a, a, an integrative process between each other, the research and the data and to solve the, the problem or come up with a constructive issue, construct issue. I hope it's clear by now. Um, now, um, let me uh, go through uh, the example of concrete feature and abstract uh, construct of objective. Uh, and probably now can, can really uh, understand the difference. Now, a consumer, uh, a concrete property, something is very clear, is his age, sex, uh, status, material status, his income, is all concrete, is very clear for you. The abstract properties, uh, uh, type of product, uh, I mean, um, uh, the abstract properties is his attitude toward the product, a brand loyalties, high involvement in purchase, emotions. These are not quantifiable, but we can quant, uh, do a quantif uh, quantifiable other issues to drive to this. And, uh, you know, we say, okay, this person in love because he is not looking at his watch, he's getting a flowers, he sings. Um, you do all these calculations to come up with this, uh, the abstract properties. So as a consumer, you, there is a concrete properties, which is age, sex, material status, income, and all these things. As none uh, and, uh, and uh, abstract properties, is the attitude toward the product, brand, and all these things. Now, in the organization level, you have the concrete properties is the name of the company, number of the employees, total asset, fortune, computers, uh, number of the books, number of you know uh, tables. These are uh, uh, concrete properties. The abstract properties is the competence of employees, uh, the quality control, the channels, power, the competitive advantage. This is what they do um, uh, yearly, uh, research about the level of universities in Canada. So they look at number of students to, um, which is uh, concrete properties to a number of classes, number of books, number of libraries, the space that they can cover but then they look at the quality of the professors, what they're delivering, um, uh, the research they are doing, type of research, that's uh, abstract uh, properties. Now, um, that's in the organization level. On the brand loyalties, you would look at the number of time, how many, how many times of a particular brand you have purchased and versus uh, the uh, the like and dislike of particular brand, the degree of satisfaction of that brand. These are ab abstract. Uh, they, on the customer uh, satisfaction, you look at the 
identifiable attribute that makes up the product, uh, service and response. So uh, like, a, you know, time of the service, how long it took, um, with the experience, the, if the customer is well experienced uh, or not, it's all a level of, you can calculate the, the, the concrete properties. The abstract uh, is like, dislike, uh, and uh, I don't know, uh, positive feeling, negative feeling, this is not calculatable. Um, the service quality, uh, you look at the identifiable attribute of services, you look at uh, personal communication, how well is done, the service provided is uh, uh, provider's knowledge. So these are calculatable. Um, the abstract one is the expectation held about each identifiable attribute, evaluate judgment of perform performance. Uh, you just, uh, they, you know, if you are in a good mood, you say oh, it's a good performance. If you're in bad mood, you say, okay, it's a bad performance. It, it is not measurable. So the, the constructs uh, and goes on. So when it comes in the advertisement is the factual properties of the ad versus the, uh, for example, uh, favorable and not favorable judgment, added, nice, not nice, all these things. So the construct, abstract construct, is a, a, and, and uh, it's a very important to, to uh, evaluate, the, uh, to, to drive the, the data from, uh, to drive the conclusion, the judgment, according to the data that you are g uh, gathering from it. Now, um, I, uh, probably what we will do now, um, let's finish up one more slide and then we will take a break after that. Now the, the scale uh, measurement, and then the scale measurement is, uh, now we, we, we gonna want to start, uh, uh, you know, doing our research and our research it has to be, as we said, a scale. When we say uh, a lot of rain, you need to scale it. What do you mean by lots of rain? Uh, lots of rain, um, how do you measure that? When you say it's hot, it's different when you say hot in, um, in um, I don't know, in hot in Canada is when it's a, uh, reach 40. A hut in Saudi Arabia or Kuwait or some part of India also, when it reach 80 under the sun. So a hut, when we say hut, we need to scale it. Is it, and the scale has to be uh, measured accordingly. So um, um, one of the biggest mistake, if you went to States, that when you drive across the state, suddenly if the, from 80 kilometers change to a 50, from 80 to 50. Now, the reason is a different scale. It's, it's in, in, in Canada, they, they work based on the scale of kilometers. In, uh, in, uh, in, in USA, based on miles. So if you're driving 80 in Canada, you cannot drive more than 50 miles in USA. Uh, just because you're right, driving 80, it doesn't mean you have to can drive 80 there because there is measures, scales measures is miles here is, a, is a kilometers. So the scales has to be, uh, you know, um, the same uh, uh, inter, uh, interval. Now, so as we said, the processing of uh, assigning a description to a representative range of possible response to a question um, about a particular objective or construct. So you need to scale things and you uh, in for for the answering the a question or, or something like that and scale is designated degree of intensity assigned to a response 
in a given question or observation. So when you say, I'm gonna measure the speed, you have to say, I'm measuring it okay, in kilometers. When you say, I'm gonna measure the weight, you have to measure it, you say, I have to measure it in kilograms. So there is a scale for doing so. Now, we will take a, a probably 10 minutes break and we will be back at uh, 210, at, at 10 minutes probably. And we will finish up, uh, hopefully we can finish uh, this uh, chapters plus we can, there is a one or two videos that I want you to see to really start, you're in a stage of to start synchronizing this information that you've been getting uh, for the last uh, seven to eight weeks. So I'll see you in 10 after two. See ya. Okay, um, so if you notice, there is a different way of measurements and uh, each measurement has, a, you know, standard scales. And uh, we will talk about the, the, the scales. And we said that there is nominal scales, which is a question required to respond to provide the uh, to provide only some types of descriptive of uh, of as a raw response. The second type is the ordinal scales allows the response to express relatively magnitude between the answers to questions. And uh, the third, we say the interval, as the video also said that, then we say the absolute difference between each scales. So um, um, each scales is, is totally different. And the ratio is allow the researcher to, uh, to identify the absolute difference between a scale point to make a comparison between the response. So um, one is just saying, you know, they're not connected. You like black and white, uh, somebody likes a green, it's, it's, it's nominal. And then you got the extreme one where you can say um, satisfied, dissatisfied with the internal measurement and how much is the difference between the measurement. So, um, <clears throat> Let me say, um, if you want to uh, buy something, and in the when you're buying, your, for example, your first car, you need to have one thousand dollars income monthly. But if you want to buy your your a Mercedes, so um, you cannot have only one thousand. You need to have. Uh, 10,000, for example. So the difference between buying the first car or buying a car and buying a Mercedes, there is a gap of $10,000. But if, uh, if you're talking about buying a car and buying a Honda, there might be the gap of $2,000. So the, 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 the ratio scales is measures also the gap between um, this stage to this stage. And, and that's the, the difference between uh, an internal, internal says, okay, when I, I buy a car, I'm making $1,000 and I buy another car when I'm making. So it, it is, it's, it's measures all the difference also. Now, as a good example is, uh, uh, for example, you'll say, please indicate the, the, the material status. And this is a good examples for, uh, uh, nominal. Uh, when you say, um, for example, here says, please indicate your material status. They are not related to each other. Widows, divorce, separated. Uh, they are kind of uh, not connected to each other. Do you like or dislike chocolate ice cream? Yes or no, or say like, dislike. Do you, which of the following uh, supermarket have you shopped at the last 30 days? 
So they are not connected, so they are separated. So these are nominal scales. They're not measurable. Uh, they're not connected, basically. Uh, now, the second part is the example of ordinal scale. Uh, when you say, which of the statement best describe your, uh, your opinion of the quality uh, of an Intel PC processor, you are comparing with uh, others or you have more than one answer. These are ordinal. So you say mine about the same at the uh, higher, lower, or uh, about the same. So you are comparing or you have more than one answer there. So that's an ordinal scale. And then you have the interval scales, which is here where you uh, say satisfied, dissatisfied, and you rate it from zero to uh, 10. Now, uh, the, the, the difference between this one and this one is there is no rating zero there. Is from could be from one to 10, but here from zero to 10. So uh, uh, this is the, in, uh, the example of interval scales. Um, it tells you the, the, the measures itself. So the, the, for example, how likely are you to recommend the send to the restaurant X to a friend, one to five, and then you calculate uh, the, the potential uh, as, as a numbers there. Now the ratio scales, now you have here the interval scales, and then you have the ratio scale. Um, please circle the number of children under 18 years of age currently living in your household. So you might have a child uh, number uh, two, seven, or five, or four. So you select this number of children at under 18 years old. In the past seven days, how many uh, did you go shopping in a retail shopping? Uh, you enter the numbers, and these are can be shown in a different way. Um, uh, in years, uh, what is your current age? Uh, that's another example of ratio scales because uh, um, you're asking him some questions, and then he's uh, he's answering the same thing as a somebody is 18, but he's answering the same thing as someone will answer when he's 40. Also, so you say between uh, 18 to 40. Uh, this ratio of uh, uh, liking the white chocolate, for example, or hating the uh, buying a van. Uh, so this is like a, the, the, the ratios uh, in it. Now, evaluating the, the, the measurement scales is the scales has to be re reliable. Uh, so the extent to which the scale is can be uh, always, uh, you know, uh, reproduce the same or the similar measurement result in a repeated trial. Uh, as a good example, it, you know, you, you, the old days of a scale, uh, you put uh, that uh, sometimes a broken scale machine, a good example, you step on it and shows you that you are 50 pounds. And the second step, second time you step on it, shows you 100. Third time shows you that 75. You say this scale is not reliable. But other scale, when you keep stepping on it, it keeps showing you that you are uh, 100 pounds. You say, okay, this is a reliable scale. So it, whatever, how many times you repeat it, it gives you the same result and how you repeat it. So it's assessed by the test and retesting technique. It evaluate equivalent from the technique. So uh, whether uh, the, the, whether you are the 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 the, the, valid, the reliability, it's the same testing and retesting, or you using a different technique and shows the same thing. Uh, let's say 
you using uh, uh, electronic and non-electronic scale, they're both showing the, the same uh, measures. And the internal consistency, so it's always showing you that the process is always doing the same thing, takes your heaviness and convert it to the, the, the weightness or how much do you weight. And uh, you can do a splitting or you can do a retesting. So you can do a, a small a sample, you do the test on it and you see, oh, the measure is the same thing. And then you do a small sample and this measure is the same thing. So you say the scale is that I'm putting in is reliable. Um, now, the validity is a different. Uh, access, assess the accuracy of the measurement of the scales. And uh, there is different, uh, uh, is it a valid? So uh, when, when we say um, the temperature is uh, 50 Fahrenheit, well, that's a, a valid comment in USA, but it's not a valid comment in, in Canada because we go with the Celsius. So how valid is, uh, for, especially for somebody who maybe doesn't understand what the Fahrenheit stands for. Um, a content validities, and there was a conversion validity, which is evaluate a multi-item scale. scale. So um, it could be measured from a different way and would drive the same construct uh, uh, result. So um, basically in the, the first half of the class, we were talking about the, uh, the process that we need to do uh, because we, uh, we start from the end result of a business plan. What's our statement as a business plan here? And once we are putting this uh, uh, statement, then we need to do a process, which is do an, uh, an inter, um, primary and secondary data. But to do a primary and secondary data, we need to do a survey. And to do a survey, we need to do a measurement for surveys. And there is a, a certain quality for a measurement of surveys, valid, uh, validity, and reliability. And then we do the surveys, and there is different kind of a, a research or surveys methods that can be done, which is we, we mentioned it in the earlier here. Um, and then we, then we keep driving a primary and secondary data. And from primary and secondary data, we drive the SWOT analysis. And from SWOT analysis, we drive the, uh, the, uh, the TOES analysis. And from the TOES analysis, we build our business plan accordingly. So this is the stage that we have to go, the process we have to go to build uh, the business plan. So the marketing research is the main pillar for building um, the, the business plan all together. Otherwise, your business plan would be not based on real and effective uh, suggestion. Now, there is type of uh, uh, scales that you measure the behavior. And liquid scales, it comes because of, of French uh, professor came up with it, and it's basically liking and disliking. Now, um, just wanted to, to uh, you know, do you like it? You don't like it? And there is uh, different type of liquid. Sometimes you will, uh, you just give uh, happy and natural, but you don't put uh, this not happy. So this is kind of a shifting the scales. But if you put it all together, not happy, not natural, uh, very happy, this is a balance of scales. Now, so the semantic differentiation is uh, when you depolar or bipolar, so there is two sides of it, uh, not happy and happy. Uh, this is what a semantic scale capture the attitude and feeling of a given objective. But if you are responding 
to a scale and there is, you're not happy and there's no sign for it, what are you gonna put? Uh, you're not uh, indifferent and you're not happy. You are just looking for a scale. So that's a, a shift in, 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 in uh, research. Now, so uh, the, there is a, what you call a behavior intentional scale. And in the, in the behavior intentional scale, uh, it's, it's the capture the likelihood that the people will demonstrate some type of predictability or predictable behavior intent toward purchasing or objective or a service in the future time frame. So is basically you say you want to find out uh, whether this person a likelihood of buying something in the future or not. So uh, it is um, you wanted to see whether uh, the ch what's the chance of his buying this uh, product, and this is um, it can be measured differently. Now, just to want to make sure to understand a construct or a scale development process. This is the process to do a scales, which is uh, it's the basic uh, things that you need to start to build your, your primary data. First, you need to identify and define the construct. In other words, um, as we said, it's, it's construct is something that it's not measurable by itself. I like it, I don't like it, I'm ex I will be excited, I'm not excited, um, most likely. These are not measurable itself, but th there is uh, data that we can collect to, uh, to, to measure, to find out the measurement of this. If these are, uh, could be positive coloration, negative coloration, but, but they should be connected to these. So the first step, you need to identify and define the construct. The second step, you, initi you create an initial pool of attribute statement. So you put the statement says, if this person is making $100,000 a year, he might buy a Mercedes or uh, a luxury car. So these are a statement, create initial pool of attribute of statements. So you know now, if he's making $100,000, he might buy a Mercedes. But you know, if he has seven children, he might not buy a Mercedes, even if he makes $100,000, he might uh, uh, buy a van. So these are statements that you need to put to make sure that he, is he buying a Mercedes or not? So somebody, is the first, the first question, the first question that I, I we need to know is the fact that uh, who is buying a Mercedes? Now the Mercedes could be bought by a, uh, Uh, it could be bought by, uh, you know, uh, somebody who makes $100,000 or somebody who is not making the $100,000, uh, but you need to want to make sure this person is also uh, doesn't have so many children because the car would not think. So there are so many statements you need to know. Now then assess the, uh, the and select the, uh, the third step, assess and select the reduced set of item statements. So you, you might write 10 statements and then you say, okay, from that 10 statement, I will pick only five statements, which is can drive me to the construct. And then you design the, the scales and the uh, pretest. 
So the, the, you design the scales could be your income, um, yearly income, or uh, number of children, or uh, your job title. These are all can be the scales, um, type of work, I'm sorry. These are could be the scales what you can, you know, uh, different type of scales probably that you can use to, to build your, you know, uh, the research. Then you design this, uh, as we said, scales and a pretest. So you, after you do the, the scales, you do some pretesting to see whether these things is working accordingly. Accordingly, and once you do the pretest, you do the you know complete statistics analysis where you do you know the mood, the median, to see if it's these questionnaires are really drive to the same thing. So you probably uh, best thing you can do you can you know give this question to somebody who owns a, a Mercedes, and then let him answer it. If if he's answering according to your theory and uh, then uh, according to your thought then he is fit so five people who have a mercedes one says uh yes i will buy it and he can say that my income is a hundred thousand i have two children the other person says my income is a hundred thousand i have uh, five children uh the third person says i i've sold my mercedes and uh, uh, because I have seven children. So the, all these things can be, you know, pre-tested and refined and purely scaled. Then the, the, the last two steps is that you refine the scales and you refine your questionnaires also. And then you complete the final scales of evaluation where you take this and start doing a population for your uh, uh, research. So um, the activities is basically like this. When you identify and define and construct is determine the construct dimensions factors. When you create initial approval for attribute statement, you conduct a qualitative research, collect secondary data, identify the theories. And you, how you did, as we said, identify your theory is by putting some hypothesis. And then you assess the, select the, reduce the set of item statement is that when you use a, a quantitative judgment and item analysis. Um, then you design the scales and protests through the collect data and protest, and you evaluate the reliabilities and validities of uh, these uh, scales. Eliminate purely designed questionnaires. There's lots of purely designed, especially double negative questions or not clear questions. And uh, most often quantitative judgment, uh, but may involve further reliabilities and validity tests. So you need to do some testing before you do uh, your, your uh, uh, final uh, scale measurements. Okay. Now, there is other rating scales, which as we spoke about it is non-competitive rating scales, is the fact that you are trying to uh, measure something without doing a comparison for it. And basically says, uh, when you ask any question, if you're making 100,000, would you buy a Mercedes? This is non-competitive rating scale. But if you're asking, if you're making $100,000, would you buy a Mercedes, Audi, or BMW? That's a competitive. You compare your product, which is a Mercedes, to other product, which is a BMW and Audi. So that's a competitive one. And non-competitive, you're asking the direct, would you buy a Mercedes? So the required a judgment without reference to another object. So you don't uh, person or concept. This is non-competitive. The competitive one is a required a judgment comparing to one subject, person, or concept against another of scales. So when, when you say it's hot or cold, this is you're not comparing it. But if you say 
Today, Canada is cold comparing to India or Saudi Arabia or Kuwait, uh, then it is comparative uh, scaling. And then you have the graphic ones, and most of you saw it, um, uh, maybe when you went to McDonald's or something, um, um, smiley, uh, normal, angry, very angry, these you have to take as a, and they are graphic, so you can see them and you need to take one of them. So these are the, the, the graphic uh, ones. The other scaling is rank to order scales. So it says, you give him five things and you say, if you make, you're making $100,000 uh, uh, a year, uh, would you, and you give him an option of five, different or uh, say three different cars, Mercedes, BMW, and uh, Audi. Please rank them which one you would buy first. So he puts, for example, some of them will put uh, Mercedes one, some of them will put BMW one, uh, and then Mercedes two. So they reorder the scale, allow the response to compare their own respo response by indicating which one is the first, which one is the second, which one the fourth, and so on. In this would not be an answer alone. You there's other questions comes in before and after it. So if you say, okay, um, if I'm making a hundred thousand uh, dollars, the, the other question says, what's the safety for you? How important the speed? And then you put these options. So you, you know, if he's thinking about safety, then he probably will select um, hypothesis saying he will select a Mercedes. But if he's thinking of for the speed, uh, probably hypothesis your hypothesis, which is will drive your theory, saying it will uh, be select the BMW. So 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 this is how you rank one, two, three, four, five, six, something like that, and. The other option is uh, you ask him the percentage. What's the chance of you selecting a Mercedes? You say 50%, the other the 30%, and the other 20%. So total will be a total of 100%. So this is another option of how you do uh, 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 a constant uh, sum scales. So the skills measures issues, the issues that you need to look at it is uh, whether it, it is a single item scale. So uh, as we said, there is one scale that you doing uh, measurement whether it collect the data only one attribute of one object or construct. So you're one question and you're looking at one attribute or, you know, um, or you have a multiple item scales, which is simultaneously you collect the data on a several, several attributes, which as we said, you can have so many questions with the different scales of measures. It could be smile, not smile, graphic, uh, a percentage and ranking, all these things compare, uh, com to do the comparative or non-comparative scales to drive uh, it could be a construct data. So construct data is a very complicated, it could be driven. It, it, you have to have some um, a, a sociology and psychology knowledge to build uh, the questionnaires in a way that they drive you to a constructive uh, construct data. Um, and also you can find this, uh, literature, this information on, on the uh, internet, uh, this information also. But the last thing you need to have to do a clear wording, prevent ambiguity. And the best thing you can do is probably give it to somebody who, and tell them what do you understand from this question. Um, <clears throat> when you say nobody like no one. And what does that mean? How I'm supposed to answer it? Nobody like no one 
means nobody likes uh, everyone and no, uh, or nobody likes nobody. <clears throat> One of the commenters always, probably you heard the song for Bob Marley, no, no woman, no cry. Does that mean if there is no woman, there is no cry or woman should not be crying because he's using two negative words, no woman, no cry. So some people say, well, if there is no woman in a life, then man would not be crying or woman should not be crying. No woman, no cry, which is that's the right answer. Woman should not be crying. But because it's not a clear wording, is is sometimes it cause some confusing. So negative, you need to stay away from the word no or a negative, uh, you know, in, when you do your survey. So um, this is uh, one more thing I want to show you uh, before we 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 break for today, and. Um, <clears throat> It is basically um, probably I need you to look at the difference between mode, median, mean, and range. These are the tools that makes it different when you are uh, really uh, doing your uh, assignment. If you don't understand the difference between mood median, mean, they are, you use them, but you use them in a different wording. Uh, when you're doing your math, when you calculate 10 things and divide it by 10, um, that's a mean and more than, you know, all these things, but if it is statistically has different meaning, different wording. So when you say I found the average of uh, something, it's a different, it is the same thing when you say, I found the mood median and all these things, but it, it is not the, the, the literature it's used in the marketing research. So I'm gonna play this for you uh, very quickly. And then after that, we will answer any questions if you have, uh, whether about the assignment or the exams or anything that you have in mind or about the, 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 the course. In this video, we will be looking at the mode, median, mean, range, and standard deviation. In the last video, you saw how we can display a data set using things like histograms, stem plots, and pie charts. We use these diagrams to help us visually display a data set. However, there is another way we can describe a distribution, and that way is by using numbers. The mode, median, mean, range, and standard deviation give us numerical information about the distribution of a data set. Specifically, the mode, median, and mean are measures of center or central tendency, and the range and standard deviation are measures of spread. We will look at how we can determine the measures of center first. So suppose I took a random sample of nine people and measured their heights. Now the mode of a data set refers to the data value that is most frequently observed. Notice how the number 154 appears three times in this data set. This means that the mode of this data set is equal to 154. Now the median refers to the data value that is positioned in the middle of an ordered data set. Students often forget that to find the median, your data must be first put into order. We usually order the data set from smallest to largest. We can clearly see that the number 154 is in the middle of the data set because there are four data points above it and there are four data points below it. So the median of this data set is equal to 154. When a data set is extremely large, it might be helpful for us to use the formula n plus 1 divided by 2. This formula tells us the position of the median. n refers to the total number of data values in our sample. We have a total of 9 values in our sample, so n is equal to 9, and 9 plus 1 is equal to 10, and 10 divided by 2 gives us 5. As a result, the median is equal to the value in the fifth position, which is equal to 154. Note that we could have counted from the bottom and we would still get the same answer, as long as the data set is ordered. 
We always use the formula n plus 1 divided by 2 to find the position of the median. When we have an odd amount of data values, the median will always be apparent. However, if n is an even number, we see that we have two middle data points. And if we use the formula, we end up with 5.5. We see that there isn't a value in this position. So what we do is, we take the arithmetic average of the two values beside this position. So we would have 154 plus 155 divided by 2. And we get an answer of 154.5. This value is in fact, the value of the median for this data set. The last measure of central tendency we will talk about is the mean. The mean is just another name for the arithmetic average. The formula of the mean is as follows. It is equal to the summation of all data values divided by the total number of data values. If our mean comes from a sample, we call it x bar. So to get the mean for this sample, we add up all the data values, and since there is a total of 10 values, we will divide by 10. As a result, we get a mean or x bar of 165.6. Let's quickly compare between the median and the mean. Both of these are measures of center, but they measure center in a different way. The median refers to the physical middle point. So for this data set, the median would be equal to 12. Now the mean can be thought of as the balance point. If you calculate the mean for this data set, you would get a value of 10. If these people were of equal weights, this is the position in which a seesaw would be balanced. Now let's talk about the measures of spread. This includes the range and standard deviation. Both of these values measure spread in a different way. The range is simply the maximum minus the minimum, so it tells us how much room a distribution takes. In this data set, the range is equal to the largest number, which is 196, minus the smallest number, which is 139. As a result, the range is equal to 57. Now the standard deviation is computed using this formula. The formula looks a little complicated, but the calculation for the standard deviation is simple. We will calculate the standard deviation for the following data set. I will create a table to help me with my calculations, and this table corresponds to the numerator of the formula. Notice how x bar is contained within the formula, so we should calculate this first. You should find that the mean is equal to 15.4. The formula says we need to subtract each value from x bar, so we do this on the table. 10 minus 15.4 is negative 5.4. 12 minus 15.4 is negative 3.4. 16 minus 15.4 is 0 0.6, and so on. The next step is to square what we have just calculated. Negative 5.4 squared is 29.16. Negative 3.4 squared is 11.56 and so on. The next step is to find the sum of what we have just calculated. You should find that this is equal to 75.2. Remember that we used this table to calculate the numerator of the formula, so we can now replace it with 75.2. From here, the formula should be pretty straightforward. n refers to the total number of data values, and there are 5 data values in this data set, so n is equal to 5. We can simplify this, and we end up with a standard deviation that is equal to 4.336. Now what does the standard deviation even tell us? The standard deviation tells us how close the values in a data set are to the mean. For example, a small standard deviation indicates a small amount of variability for a given data set. In other words, there will be a lot of values that are closer to the mean, which makes the distribution less spread out. In contrast, a high standard deviation indicates a high amount of variability for a given data set. In other words, there will be a lot more values that are farther from the mean, which makes the distribution more spread out. The last thing we will talk about is variance. Variance is closely related to the standard deviation. The only difference between these two formulas is that the standard deviation involves taking the square root of the calculations. And for the variance, we don't take the square root. Also, notice how for the standard deviation, we denote it as s. And for the variance, we denote it as s squared. Both of these can be referred to as the sample variance and the sample standard deviation.
Okay, um, let me know if you have any question. Uh, you can write or you speak to me. Otherwise, uh, feel free um, to you know, leave 